we would like to save uh, finances for something really useful, not just for hitting uh, the world, which is probably already overheated by global warming. Um, and we see that Java moves constantly, and now the uh, frequency and the release schedule uh, becomes more tight, and we see many exciting things, but not overloaded. Uh, releases that being waited for too. That's about Java. Um, what about me and our company? I worked at Bellsoft uh, for a few years, and Bellsoft is uh, a unique company because uh, Bellsoft produces uh, the Berica JDK, a default uh, Open JDK distribution for uh, Spring Boot containers. It also produces Alpaqueta Linux and the Berica Native Image Kit, which perfectly combine into an uh, Alpaquita cloud native platform, that ACMP that you can see uh, in our live stream. And uh, what I do, I uh, participate in uh, development of OpenJDK. I also uh, speak at uh, events. And the overall uh, contribution of company is very significant in OpenJDK space. Prior to Bellsoft, I worked at Oracle also uh, in, in, in the domain of OpenJDK development. And before that, uh, I used to work at Deutsche Bank. So uh, the topic of financial uh, savings optimizations uh, is uh, very, uh, very uh, close uh, to me. So let's look at uh, nice and beautiful mobile phones of the past. This whole area develops so rapidly and that you won't be able to capture a good picture that will last for half of a year. We now have slightly different devices that are much more modern and much more powerful. And they are able to perform tasks that used to be performed only by server class machines just. And the same happens in servers. Uh, that new hardware develops rapidly and software that runs on that hardware has many optimizations. So it can be seen in, in a while. But it all started many years ago. Uh, ARM as a company and ARM as an architecture. It started many years ago and that's uh, what we see now, still see uh, that company and that architecture under the same name, but slightly different logos. And the number of devices powered by ARM grew enormously. You see uh, that the uh, estimate from uh, the end of last year shows that there are 250 billion processors in different devices. That are, of course, uh, processors. Not all of them are servers, not even all of them uh, power mobile phones, maybe something smaller, but it is a, a, a huge number. So what's that I say? What's that uh, instruction set? It's a way to communicate for software, for people who write that software and run uh, it on the real hardware, to tell hardware what to do to uh, bring you a valuable result, the result of your program that it executes. And that uh, specification for that sp special language, uh, of course, it has multiple versions uh, and new versions appear uh, then time goes. And there are major and minor versions. There are also application profiles uh, or just different profiles. Uh, among them, application profile is the most important for us as uh, Java developers and Java users because it really allows us to run uh, JVM uh, that we are used to. The JVM that contains different compilers, JIT compilers or AOT uh, compilers uh, that performs many optimizations uh, for the future runtime, etc. Um, there are also names like ARCH64 or 
uh, A64 that denote execution modes and the exact instructions set for that execution modes because same CPU can work in different execution modes. It can be selected sometimes. This is the one that, that is used for server side ARM computing. And also there's a code name ARM64 that's used uh, as a name for Linux kernel port for, uh, for that class of machines. It's, it's really simple if you think about that, but you just uh, have to know all the acronyms if you work with the technology. There are multiple vendors that produce real CPUs, real cores. And what they do, uh, they license that technology, I see, or some uh, IP designs from uh, ARM. Uh, they need to make an agreement and then to produce real hardware. And ARM even is going to produce some hardware uh, itself, but we uh, haven't seen it. If we look uh, how uh, specification changed for years, uh, we see some dates here, uh, data years, then uh, a certain spec, spec version has been finalized and published. And a few years after real hardware uh, is being released, so you see some hardware uh, listed on top of uh, frame boxes. And inside the frame boxes, there are just a few selected features of each of spec version. That features are actually extensions and they're optional and mandatory extensions uh, in some versions. And typical practice that we observe is that if some vendor implements uh, or releases new new core or new CPU, uh, it implement uh, some spec version and extra possible extra extensions from uh, newer versions. That's a normal practice because you can offer uh, good optimizations, extra features if you if you already know that uh, next spec will. Uh, contain uh, certain uh, certain things. Uh, what are the extensions? Some useful ones related to cryptography, related uh, to uh, check some calculations, related to CMD processing of data. Like from the very beginning, there was Neon, ex Neon extension, uh, which wasn't optional, and a bit later, uh, the extension called SV appeared, scalable vector extension, that allows uh, machines that implement uh, that uh, in silicon to compete with uh, things like AVX. And if you process long rows of uh, data, like streams of some numbers, uh, it allows you to effectively and quickly compute on top of that. That's kind of, uh, a task that, that we can imagine then some uh, quad streaming uh, is being processed or other uh, financial data uh, that, that's structured as a long stream of numbers. Or there are extensions that help to uh, work with uh, machine learning tasks like uh, uh, Bflow 16 support. And among that hardware, there are notable points like uh, Thunder X was uh, a machine uh, by Kavium uh, that had 96 cores. Uh, it wasn't uh, too powerful. So each single core uh, was really kind of a low end compared to ex ex different hardware existed at that time. But there are a lot of cores. Later, Next generations introduced like 256 cores or even 384 cores. Mostly uh, Hubble or HPC, uh, but also could be used uh, as a just a powerful server machine. Some designs here uh, are denoted. Uh, 
and called nervous. That's something that ARM develops as a reference and some good design that uh, vendors can take and implement their hardware. And also you can see uh, Apple ones, M1 and M2 and others. The uh, Ampere One uh, CPU listed here has been released only two weeks ago. That's a new one, we'll see some specs later. And you see the newer, uh, the machine is, uh, the newer is the spec version that it implements. And of course, there is a very recent version of specification called RMB9. And there are already some CPUs, by the way, they are mobile ones, most of them. But Nervous N2 is a server class uh, course. Well, I mentioned that there are different vendors. Here are just few of them. There are many more. Just you see familiar logos here and this is really a necessary thing for many of the vendors to stay in this space. I mentioned nervous, and uh, this is uh, an implementation managed by ARM and uh, ARM commits to development of uh, this design. And we see real hardware that uses it in, in, in wild. So how uh, it all started, machines with many cores, uh, which are ARM cores. Just a few years ago, it was very unusual to see one or to touch one. So I, I was really happy to do that in person, like to touch real server, because we saw no real ones. And it had many, um, many cores. Now it's not an up-to-date actual model, but uh, newer ones look like this. So this is uh, one based on an Ampere one. And you see that it contains many billion blocks like uh, recent DDR5 uh, memory or special processing cards. And it, it looks gorgeous. And it's really a powerful thing. Uh, and such machines become to consume more and more power, but at the same time, they start to consume more uh, cores uh, that have more processing power in them. So you see the hardware is real. What about software? Software ecosystem uh, for ARM is now just a software ecosystem ex that exists in the world. Because vendors of, I would say, all major software technologies look uh, on how to port uh, their products or uh, the open source um, code to that uh, architecture. It becomes a, a primary target, of course, along with x86. And the same is true for OpenJDK. You see that it's of, it is, of course, listed here. And we'll uh, talk about that in uh, more detail. You can check for more software technologies. That ecosystem also includes diagnostic tools related to Java which is important because uh, we really like to measure performance and to uh, well, analyze it. And that performance has been greatly improved by uh, a certain JEP uh, in times of JDK 11 that Bellsoft implemented and in many uh, intrinsics, so-called uh, optimized functions in OpenJDK. But besides of performance, there is a question of correctness. And we write uh, programs, especially uh, concurrent programs. Uh, sometimes x86 forgives uh, some programmers' mistakes, uh, which isn't true for ARM. Uh, there are really interesting observations uh, when the program is incorrect and we execute it in uh, highly out of order uh, hardware. Uh, we can see uh, real uh, failures. I mentioned ultra family. 
and there are multiple generations there already. And that latest generation contains uh, up to 192 cores in one server. And if you build a rack, you can run over than uh, 7,000 virtual machines on that rack. That's, that's a huge number. So um, another vendor is Amazon. Uh, in Amazon, there are three generations of Graviton processors. Two of them uh, actually uh, implement Nervous uh, design, and you see how it's developed. So every few years, spec is updated, and the processors are uh, replaced by a newer generation. Uh, the production um, process becomes more and more uh, tiny. You see that uh, frequencies stay about the same because of physical limitations, or uh, as well as number of cores. And in the last line, there's some projected software performance. How can we observe that in wild? Like it became 25% uh, faster, as Amazon says, uh, in last generation, or like 10 times faster since the first generation. Well, we can run benchmarks like Java benchmarks. Here's some voluntary selection. And we can compare uh, two generations of Graviton processor, for example. And we really can see that 25% improvement, right? At the same time, we can compare generations of OpenJDK. Like we can compare OpenJDK 20 versus OpenJDK 8. And you see again, uh, even for some trivial set of benchmarks, we can see about the same level of improvement. And if you combine that improvements with newer software and newer hardware, we'll see like 50% improvement. So it worth trying. But we get some improvements, we get some development. What about costs? At the time then uh, Amazon hardware was released, people just compared costs of certain workloads that can be run on that service. Well, it turned to be uh, an x86 massacre because it was so much cheaper to run uh, that workloads on ARM hardware. So because of that, the share of ARM computing on ARM in clouds grows very rapidly because it allows us to save and to be more effective. And cloud providers uh, expect even more uh, growth uh, in just a few years. And what about development hardware? Well, we have such machines, like uh, machines powered by Apple Silicon, or we have uh, machines running Windows or Linux, uh, which are now even probably more powerful than x86 machines as well as seeing what happens uh, with uh, Apple. And there are now software ports on all the systems that allow to run OpenJDK natively. And why is it important? Because if you run OpenJDK in native mode versus some emulation or virtualization, it works times faster. Um, so of course, we need correct and effective uh, ports uh, for, for native um, combination of ARM and certain operating systems. So there are many optimizations in JDK 11, and since then, uh, I won't just tell that in detail, but uh, there are also projects in OpenJDK, ongoing projects being developed, and they developed uh, keeping uh, ARM target in mind. So all that new features already uh, work perfectly on ARM servers, they, then they are released. And then we use all that stuff and prepare our applications for deployment, we typically build containers. And now we can build small containers for uh, muscle-based operating systems like Alpine, and that all will work on Java servers as well. You can take good base images uh, and build very, very slim containers. And then you prepare images on ARM development, uh, ARM desktops or laptops locally. 
you can really both target ARM and x86 after all, because there is a cross-build process. So it's easy now to perform development uh, for both targets, which is really a case if you're multi-cloud or your cloud doesn't provide uh, some kind of instance um, in certain regions. That really happens. And by the way, clouds that we have right now that offer uh, ARM hardware, I already mentioned Amazon, and Ultra machines can be found uh, in Oracle Cloud and in Azure. So it's a very uh, wide offering of ARM machines. So you see that hardware and software work perfectly together and allow you to pay less and get more. And you even can get better from new and new Java versions. Just beware of the correctness of your programs. Uh, well, that all, always was a responsibility of Java programmers. So think carefully about migration strategy or consult uh, specialists. Thank you.